Hello everyone and welcome to the Ernestine J. Wilson Real Estate edition of Skills to Pay the Bills. I really enjoy doing this. Why? Because I got a chance to meet so many people. I'm James Chack and the people that you're going to meet today work for the SBA or I should say the Small Business Administration. And um, I know a little bit about the SBA, but not as much as I thought I knew, and that's why they're here to talk about how the SBA has a lot of opportunities and goodies just for you. Now, my guest is Ms. Julie Clo Klaus. Yes. And she is the SBA Deputy Director, District, Deputy <laughs> District Director and Mr. William Bill Hulk. 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 <laughs> well, we're gonna, I promise you, I will get it right each time. <laughs> but um, aside from the fact that uh, people think they know about the SBA, the SBA, when I went to the website, everything has changed. I mean, it's like <laughs> really, it's, it's bright and it's alive and it's coming at you. So today, we're going to be talking about the export aspect of the SBA and what it can do for people who are either starting in business or who have been in business but need to know how to take advantage of exporting goods to other countries. So who shall I start with? Ladies first? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for having us on the show. Um, as you saw from the website, you know, there's a lot of information. SBA, we're, you know, we say we're a small agency with a really big mission. So we're here to support the small business community. And one of the, the things that we do that we offer a lot of resources about is exporting. Um, so we're not just the agency if you want to start your business and do government contracting, but if you want to get into the export side of things, we have a lot of resources there as well. So, so a lot of people think that exporting is a big, uh, you know, long drawn out process. Right. What do you do? You start off, you know, teaching people how to you know, look at it from the standpoint of, of how it can, you know, can work for them, or how, how does it start? Right, I think there's, you know, initially there's obviously got to have an interest, and I think there's a lot of hesitation from small businesses. They think it's really hard, or there's all these barriers to entry, and they, they kind of don't even know where to start sometimes. So I think with SBA, you know, we try to tell them, like, listen, this is a sale. It just happens to be to a customer in another country. Um, so you go through a lot of the same processes you did when you were setting up your business here in the United States. You know, you, you've got to have an idea, you've got to do some homework, you've got to do a little bit of research, you've got to have a plan. And we have a lot of tools at SBA to help them through that whole process. I, I tell people, actually with exporting, it's fantastic. The federal government has so many resources to help you export, practically holding your hand through the process. If you want to import, forget it. But for exporting, there is such a range of resources that are mostly free or very low cost to you as a business owner. Well, after I introduce Bill, I want you to come back and tell okay. me what your role is. So Bill, without further ado, what do you do uh, at uh, SBA or does Julie do all of the work and you take all the credit? <laughs> well, actually, Julie started in Detroit and had an export responsibility in Detroit uh, at the district office there. So she's she started, um, I, don't, I don't know when you started started there, but she's she's got a lot of experience in, in the export field in addition to being a lawyer. So um, I'm the regional manager uh, for the Office of International Trade of SBA. Uh, I cover the Mid-Atlantic region. Uh, that's DC, Virginia, West Virginia, Maryland, and Delaware. And my responsibilities are to coach, train, educate, both banks and small businesses in our three loan guarantee programs. And I've been doing this for about 27 years now. Uh, I work with them to show them the ins and outs of, of, of trade finance and how they use it to be more competitive. Um, going back to your questions as to how people get started, right here at uh, George Mason University, uh, there is the small business, the small business um, um, development Center, SBDCs, mm -hmm. right here. So that's where companies really get started in forming their export business is through the SBDCs. And then from there, they, then they would work with um, maybe a SCORE. Uh, I don't know if you can talk a little bit about SCORE, but that's where the companies get started. I'm usually getting involved with the company once they're a year or more old because we provide loan guarantees. We don't do direct 
funding. So they need to have at least a year of financial statements, tax returns, that type of thing. Okay, so this is gonna be a two-part series. Uh, I wanna let the audience know that this is part one, and so you're not gonna get it all on one plate. Right. You're gonna actually see a second segment next week. But for this week, I'm just going to play devil's advocate and say I'm one of those people who believes that bureaucracy is just too big and that it's really not designed for me and I'm the person that's been calling the radio station but I'll never win the car. They're gonna mm -hmm. give the car to somebody else. So how has the SBA tailored itself to meet the needs of both men and women in business when it relates to export? I, I think one of the great things is that SBA has a lot of um, what I'll call grassroots availability. We have our district office structure, so at least one SBA field office in every state. But we also have a lot of resource partners. You know, Bill touched on some of them with the small business development centers, SCORE, our women's business centers. And they are the ones that can sit there with you as a business owner, um, meet with you once, meet with you 20, 30 times, whatever your needs are, all of their counseling services are free of charge. And what they do is help break down. They say, where are you today? Where do you want to be? Let's help you get there. And they kind of set the path and they can help introduce you to other resources. And you know, they maybe introduce them to someone like Bill. Bill is also at our um, it's a, a, a partnership with the Department of Commerce and Export Import Bank. It's called the US Export Assistance mm -hmm. Center, or we call it USIAC. And that's kind of a one-stop shop, if you will, for people who are interested in exporting. Kind of uh, learn what department, bring together what Department of Commerce offers, what SBA offers, which is more on the financing side, and to kind of provide a more complete package for whatever ah. your needs might be. Well, two things. I'm an avid Shark Tank viewer. Okay. And I see people coming in with really interesting products and they make no they make no bones about it. Um, you may think that you have a great product, but unless it stands up to the test of time and you know all the things that people on the other side expect from your business and your product, you're, you're gonna fall through the crack. It's not so much about getting the money. Mm. You, you have to have a plan. And many times people come in without a plan. That being said, when I went to the site, I was just really amazed. And at first I said, oh, this is just too much for me to plow through. But I took it one step at a time and I said, ah, okay, now I can see how this could benefit someone who has a product and they want to sell it to, say, someone in Italy or they want to export it to some, you know, some business in uh, another part of the world. Now, getting back to the question again, when people come in and they've already been to the website, they've seen some of these things, you sit them down and you say, okay, here, here are the nuts and bolts of it. You know, what, what can they expect when they come in and sit down with that person from one of those uh, agencies associated uh -huh. with SBA? By one of our resource, normally they'll do what they call an intake process. So they'll sit down, they'll just have a conversation with you as a business owner, try to assess where you are and where you would like to go. Because you may think, oh, I need financing. But when I sit down and talk to you and hear about what you're doing and where you are, I may say, well, before we go to into financing, we got to make sure, you know, you've got this together, you've got this together, you've got this, you know, put together this whole package before you go to a bank or to another in, a route for financing. You're kinder than Mr. Wonderful. <laughs> on, uh, there's also, there's also a, you know, our website may look nice, but the, another website people should check out is, is export.gov. Um, there, they can click on the beginner tab and they can take an export assessment test. It's a nine question test. And so working with SBA and the, U, the US Export Assistance Center, a company should really take that, that nine question test to determine where they are within their domestic business to see if they're ready to become an exporter. Because they really need to ask themselves some questions as far as their, their financial capacity. Does management, is management gonna buy in to the resources that are gonna take to go into exporting. So those are the, when the, on, the, on the intake side, those are the types of questions we ask. They re, a company really needs to have somewhat of a successful entry in the, in, in the US market. Um, so they've gotta have a, a year or two of, of sales here domestically. They've demonstrated their ability to perform, 
They've established a, a, a firm balance sheet. Um, and, at, and at that time, again, they do some soul searching, they take that assessment, and the higher they score in that assessment, the more they're ready to actually uh, take advantage of a lot of the resources. Um, but we do have a export business planning tool in our website, um, which is a great way to, to get started. Okay, when they come in, they should be savvy enough to know what you're talking about. They, they just didn't overnight come up with a business plan and decide, well, I want to export pajamas to another country or something like that. They've been selling pajamas and they've been selling other things. Right. So now they feel that they have an opportunity to put their goods on, on a boat. Correct and ship them off to Greece or someplace. Right. It's like all about that. diversification. A lot of the companies that are getting started now, they've, they've, they're, the U.S. market may not be totally mature, but they now know that they've got to diversify. This is a, you know, w with the web, uh, now everybody knows whatever all the other countries are doing around the world. So they see opportunities just from sitting in front of their computer. So, and they may actually get an email from Brazil saying that, 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 hey, we've looked at your website, we're interested in the good or service that you provide, so they want to follow up on that inquiry. So, again, it's 20 years ago, it would, you know, people would have had to do a little bit more thought into exporting. Now it kind of just comes to them. Um, but it really, it's, it's really about diversifying your sales, your revenue stream. You made an interesting point. Someone in, say, Brazil or another country sees your website and they say, I like your product, I like your service. Mm -hmm. Is it possible that you and I can connect and then you have that aha moment and you say, I never thought about Brazil. This mm -hmm. is a good idea. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's, 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 it follows the, the rule of thumb. You don't put the horse in the cart. You hitch the horse mm -hmm. to the cart and then you start making your way toward that position based on the fact that you have those skills. Quickly. Let's get started on the, XB, uh, the SBA's Export Express Loan Program. I'm, okay. I'm scratching my head on this one. What okay. is that about? Well, we have three loan programs. <clears throat> the nice thing about uh, that program is it's very diverse. You can use that program. Again, these are bank loan guarantees. So we have a number of banks in the uh, D.C. metropolitan, mid-Atlantic area that, that are express lender, export express lenders. Uh, we provide the guarantee. It's a 90% guarantee to the lender. That encourages them to lend to more small business exporters. The okay. Now, that's, excuse me for interrupting sure. you, but we're going to take a break at this yeah. moment. So that's the first loan program. Yeah. You got two more programs. Yeah. When we come back, Mr. Hawk mm -hmm. and Ms. Klaus are going to talk to us about the SBA's Export Express Loan Program. Right. I did it. I'm James Jack, and you're watching Skills to Pay the Bills, the Ernestine J. Wilson real estate episode version of it. We'll be right back. They say it takes a village. We focus on the truth about things that are happening in the DMV through the voices of the people who live, work, and play on Main Street. Tune in every week to discover how the community is coming together for the greater good of every resident. Welcome back, everyone, to Skills to Pay the Bills. I'm your host, James Jack. I'm with Ernestine J. Wilson Real Estate. And today I have some very, very special guests from the SBA. If you just joined us in the first few minutes of the show, we were talking about the new SBA. New to me in the sense that I, I thought I knew a little bit about the SBA, but they've really changed. You should just go to their website you know, to start, sba.gov, and you'll see that so many things have changed, and I'm betting that there is something there for you. Today we're going to be talking about, or I should say we're going to continue talking about their export uh, programs, and Mr. Hawk was uh, talking about the three loan programs that are contained therein, and we, we just did number one. Right, well, we were talking about the Export Express program. Right. And... Again, that, that program's very diverse because a company can use it from the very first day they start, ex they, they want to start exporting. Because use of proceeds under that uh, loan program be, can be used for any export related activity. So that they can hire somebody to write their export business plan. They can use it for traveling overseas. Um, they can use it for financing transactions. They can use it for financing equipment and real estate. So for a very small business, that Export Express program can be used 
for the entire evolution of a company's exporting from just getting started and traveling overseas to get their first order to expanding their business with a new piece of real estate and, um, and equipment. Now, when you talk about loans, people shouldn't borrow money unless they really need to. So if your business is doing quite well and you don't need extra funding, you might want to talk to Bill and his people just to see maybe if I need them later on, they're there for me. But word of advice, if you don't, if you don't really need to borrow money, don't borrow money, but just get educated as Correct. to what, you know, is there, a, uh, is there for you. So you're out the door. We don't need you anymore as far as your <laughs> loans are concerned. Take your money and go back where you came from. What we want to talk about now is the, um, the SBA S ex uh, export, export, export program in a nutshell, how we've gotten you into the office or them into the mm -hmm. office. Uh, they've done the intake and they're like really excited, but they don't have a clue as to what's in store for them. All they know is they got a call or they got an email from someone out there who says, I like your widgets. I want a thousand of them. Mm -hmm. How can you ship them to me and stay within the guidelines? There are guidelines, I imagine, whenever you're talking about trade. Are all these things going to just really just confuse someone when they first come in? Uh, I think you, you actually brought up a good point, and Bill alluded to it earlier. I think there's two different um, types of businesses. There's the more proactive saying, I'm interested in going abroad, you know, looking for customers outside the United States. How, where are they? You know, where are the best re uh, markets for my you know, product or service? But then there's the reactive people who have you know, maybe this great website, and somebody in Brazil said, called you up and said, hey, I, I want to buy a thousand of those products. And they're kind of coming in at a different place because they've got a customer pending and they need kind of a crash course, if you will, and they need to figure out if they need financing to support the endeavor, or, you know, letters of credit. They're going to have a lot, lot of transactional questions, whereas the person who's in a planning phase is going to be more, I want to learn more about the process. Um, Bill had mentioned earlier there's also a website called export.gov mm -hmm. and that's meant to consolidate kind of all of the different export related programs from any federal agency whether it's from SBA commerce you know export import bank um, at US, uh, USDA you know anybody that has an export type program but they also have a really um, great tool which has been around I think for many many years and updated you know, I think yearly or it's called the basic guide to exporting and it is, it is kind of a, a beginner's Bible, if you will, of I want to export. Here's the times of things I need to consider. And oh, by the way, here's a government resource that may help you with that particular element. So if you have no exposure to exporting and you kind of want to figure out what, what do I, I don't know what I don't know yet, mm -hmm. that's a great way to start. It's a great um, resource to kind of give you the very basics across the board and all the things you might need to consider. Well, I'm a little less confused than I was mm -hmm when we first started. I'm, I'm playing the part of someone who's scratching and wondering, is this something that I should be doing? And, yes. Uh, <laughs> you know, when should I get started? But it appears to me now that the SBA has come a long way in terms of anticipating what a small business person should be doing before they even step in the door and they're telling you, before you come in, you know, here's your little homework assignment. And then when you come in, you won't have the butterflies that you think that you're going to have. It won't be a mystery to you. We've got it all laid out, but you have a responsibility to do your part before you come in. Or if you're prepared when you come in, you'll be pleasantly surprised how much more smoothly the process, you know, the process will go. So we've got our little product in the pipeline. We talked about the SBA's Export Express Loan Program. Mm -hmm. Yes. And now we want to talk about the SBA's Standard 7A Loan Guarantee. So are we, are we inviting you back into the conversation now? Somewhat. I mean, the, um, the 7A loan is, is, is SBA's kind of bread and butter core product for, for working capital. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a 75% guarantee to the lender uh, our export loan guarantees are all based on the 7A uh, boilerplate uh, program, but it, it carries a 90% guarantee, again, to encourage banks to, to lend to small business exporters. 
Um, and that has, you know, like the Export Express, um, the 7A can be used for all kinds of different purposes, uh, for short-term um, working capital purposes, all the way up to 25-year financing for real estate. Um, and that's for, that's for uh, domestic purposes. Wow, that, that's, really, that's really fascinating. I mean, it's just so much stuff you know, to, to, to take in, right. but really not as much as it appears to be. You know, it's sort of like if you're a mechanic, you know what's inside the motor, but if you're not, you're standing there and wondering why my car is not working as well as it should, or do I really need the oil change? So I'm just making analogies you know, to people who have businesses and right. you wake up every morning wondering what's going to happen today, or if something, uh, if there's manna from heaven, <coughs> is, you know, how can I make it bene you know, beneficial for me and my employees? Along, along the 7A loan, it, people don't have to deal with SBA directly. There are over 4,000 uh, 7A lenders around the country. Most banks, you know, the one that's four blocks down the road, mm -hmm. that, they're an SBA lender. So really, they can start with their current bank to talk about just general 7A uh, lending. So they don't have to go very far. They don't have to work directly with SBA. They can work directly with their bank because most banks are SBA lenders. Well, years ago, people used to talk about the SBA in a very begrudging way. They said, it's just too strict. I, you know, I would rather do this. I'll borrow the money from my Uncle Max or whatever the case may be. And, um, but, uh, as I said before, I'm just really amazed at how SBA has become business person friendly. You know, they, they've become like, okay, more transparent in terms of you need to get this done. You know, we're not hiding the, the pebble under the, the shell or anything like that. So this brings me to the question of the basic, you know, qualification criteria. You have to be qualified. You just can't walk in there, can you? Can I just walk in and uh, say, give me some money? <laughs> You can, yeah. you might not be as successful as if you uh, take a little time and make sure you're prepared. Uh, there's, you know, we have um, a lot of different seminars that we conduct in conjunction with SCORE or our small business development centers. And on the export side, we've done some with the, the U.S. Export Assistance Center to talk more about the financing and the process. And I think um, most business owners, if you've never had to apply for a business loan, you're kind of like, I'm not sure what I'm in for. I'm not sure what documents I should take. I'm not sure what the lenders are going to ask for. Let me break in on that. We just come through a recession, quote unquote. And there are a lot of people who did well before the recession. They're, you know, they're trying to get back to where they were before. They're good business people. They just happen to have been in a, in a, in a, in a field where well, they Just suffer. like everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are they going to be penalized for that? Or is SBA and the banks going to assess that and take a look at it and say, well, you have experience, you have this. Are they going to really just take a human human-like type we approach do. to they, it. They kind of look at the whole package. They're going to look at the individual, the business owner. They're going to look at the business's financials. They're going to look at the owner's financials. They're going to kind of see the years of be being in business, the experience this person has, and um, they, you know, repayment ability. They're going to see what are you mm -hmm. what are you looking to do with the proceeds. And you know, their bank, they want to be paid back. So they want to say, demonstrate for me how you think you're going to pay this back. Uh, so there's there's a lot of factors, and the the benefit of having SBA guarantee is that you know lenders are very risk averse, so mm -hmm. the guarantee there gives them a little extra comfort. So if it's a deal that you walked in and they're like you know kind of on the border, I'm not sure that I would do it. They're like okay with the SBA guarantee, yes, I will do it. You, SBA is assuming a little bit of the risk, make them a little more comfortable with the deal. What's the chance of me coming in and going through the entire process and then someone says, well, we know someone who is doing the same thing that you, uh, they, they've, they've been very successful at doing what you want to do. Do you pair people with other people? Do you, do you help them in terms of mentoring? I saw the videos, there were a lot of people you know, they were talking about their experiences. This, this, this is really good stuff. You know, mm -hmm. you're sitting there and you're watching, you say, I can do this, but how can, how can I either know or feel that there's gonna be somebody there at SBA who can say, talk to this person and talk to this person and sort of get a, a, a real life uh, an analysis, uh, you know, of, of what lies ahead, as opposed to thinking that you're the only one who has ever <laughs> done this before and you're, you're blazing a path. So what does SBA do in terms of uh, 
say mentoring or anything like that? Yeah, from the district office side, that the role that we play is kind of we're in the community, more grassroots. So we we try to learn who who is out there in the community, whether it's another government entity, whether it's a local government entity, who's providing resources. And then when a person comes in with questions, we say, Ah, okay, this is what your need is. I think this resource is probably a good match for you, mm -hmm. and try to steer them that way. If they're really looking for a mentor, um, the SCORE program is one program that we have. That's Which has been around a long been time. Been around for quite a few years. And it's, um, they used to go by the Service Corps of Retired Executives. Mm -hmm. Some people might know by that name. They go by SCORE. And it's a lot of retired individuals who are volunteering their time to kind of in their way to give back. So they have a lot of expertise and knowledge. And if you go to SCORE, often they will try to pair you with the, the man or woman who has that kind of particular expertise. So if you're saying financial statements, I'm having a really hard time figuring it out, they might try to pair you with a retired CPA who can help walk you through the process. I want to thank my guests, Ms. Julie Klaus and Mr. William Bill Hawk. I did it, didn't I? <laughs> you're a friend for life now. <laughs> They're with the SBA. This is the first segment of a two-part series that we're dealing with export and also SBA loans and how it can benefit you. So I want you to come back next week and see part two. I'm James Jack. This is Skills to Pay the Bills. I'm with Ernestine J. Wilson Real Estate. And until next week, you have a good one.